my name is Danielle Starr, and this is my Matrix audition video to be a Matrix educator. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about why I would love to join the Matrix education family. I have a few reasons. Number one, um, every single time that I've ever taken a class from Matrix or any Matrix educator, I feel like they teach from a platform of equality, which I find extremely important as an educator. Um, I've taken classes before where the educator is very condescending and know-it-all and has a little bit of an ego, and I think that we're lacking in this industry when we teach from a platform like that, and I think that it's really important to teach your stylist the way that I educate my stylist, which is we're all the same, we're all equal. There's nothing that I can do that you couldn't do without the same education, and I really I really feel like that's, that's the message that I get from Matrix every single time as well. So today, I'm going to showcase my kaleidoscope capping technique. Um, it's a new technique. Let's talk a little bit about my inspiration. So the first thing that I was inspired by is holographic color, which, as we know, has gotten very, very popular, um, especially with the opalescent pastels, which I think give you that hollow look. Um, it's very trendy right now. And one of my major things in this industry that I always try and do is using classic or old school techniques in a new way, right? So I wanted to take a cap, which is one of the oldest highlighting techniques around in our industry, and kind of twist it and make it trendy and a little more fun. Um, so that's where this technique came from. Uh, I tried it out on a mannequin. I really wanted to play around with it a lot, and I was so happy with the results. So I'm really excited to share that with you guys today. Let's talk sectioning. So, I section in diagonals. Now, keep in mind, if we're using a cap highlight, it's never gonna be a perfect diagonal or a perfect section because we can't section the hair previously because there's a cap over the whole head. So, I'm using diagonals to give that illusion of movement. I want the, the rainbow to, to basically swirl around the head in that sort of a fashion. So, I'm using my diagonals. I'm using diagonal backs. So, I'm using these diagonals that follow the shape of the head, right? So. I'm gonna start my diagonals on the same side of the part as well. The reason I'm gonna do that is because that's where the natural fall of the hair is going to be. So whichever side my client chooses to part on, I wanna color to that side. So when I'm done blending all my colors, I have that nice soft blend with all of the rainbow colors that kind of lay on top of each other. So I did three diagonals, right? Starting from a left side part, one wraps around to the other back corner. Same with this. And I actually color coded them so I could keep it, so I could remember what exactly I was doing. So since I tried this out before I put it on a real person, um, I found that it's extremely important to pre-place your sectioning on your cap. So what that means is that I use a marker to color exactly where I want to pull hair through this cap to get the look that I want. Um, I found that it was a lot harder when I had already put it on the head to figure out exactly where I wanted those diagonals to be. So I used different colors to represent each diagonal and I would recommend prepping this before your client arrives because if not, you will spend a lot of your appointment just working on your cap. Obviously, if we're trying to do a holographic color, it's important to use pastels, okay? So pastel versions of your rainbow colors are gonna create that softer blend than it would if you used your primaries, melted them into secondaries to have those bold, vibrant rainbow colors. So they're gonna give you that more opalescent uh, appearance. Um, one hot tip, however, is your hair must be pre-lightened to a level 10, pale yellow, and pre-toned. If you think about a pastel shade, Pastel shades are basically just diluted primary secondaries, right? So there's far less actual true pigment in a, in a pastel shade. So if I really wanna see that true, true pastel, I need to make sure that I'm toning out on all of my undertone. Because if I have any undertone left, let's say level nine, right? Yellow, if I put a pastel blue on a level nine yellow undertone, it's gonna turn green, right? So basically you really wanna work with a clean workspace, no warmth left, nice solid, almost like a blank white piece of paper.
let's talk my color choice. So I chose to use So Color Cult semi-permanent. The reason that I did that is because if my client decides that she wants to switch her color up, it's just standing the outside of the cuticle, right? I'm not actually processing it. She doesn't need that longevity. It's summer, maybe you want to be a little more fun with your color. So I chose to use the semi-permanent line. Now, for our rainbow colors, as we know, we have a red, an orange, a yellow, a green, a blue, a violet, and an indigo. So I picked the shades in Matrix So Color Cold that were the closest representation of pastel versions of all of those shades. So for our red, we're gonna be using bubblegum pink. Our orange is gonna be our sparkling rose. Yellow, obviously we're using Lucky Duck Yellow. For our green, I chose Sweet Mint. For our blue, Dusty Blue. The purple is gonna be our Lavender Macaroon. And our indigo is gonna be our Dusty Purple for our darkest shade. placement a little bit. My color placement for kaleidoscope capping in my first diagonal, so my blue diagonal, right, I'm going to use my indigo. And the reason that I'm going to do that is I want my darkest shade around her face and I want it to slowly lighten as it gets to the top of the head so you have that more opalescent look. So dusty purple for my indigo, first diagonal. I marked it in blue, okay. Also on my cap, that would be my black marker, okay? So I can remember where it goes. So second diagonal, I'm gonna use a melt, okay? So I'm gonna use three of my shades, melt them into one on the same strand. My roots are gonna be my sweet mint, mids are my dusty blue, and my ends are gonna be my lavender macaroon. So basically that would be the middle section of my rainbow. Then when I get to that top section, I'm working from the top of the rainbow, which would be where my red is, right? So, that would be my bubblegum pink, which is gonna melt into sparkling rosé, into Lucky Duck Yellow. I also might mark them on my cap. So, my greens and my blues, I marked with a green permanent marker, and then my reds, I obviously marked with a red permanent marker. <clears throat> now, I'm gonna start my placement in that first diagonal, the closest to the hairline. And the reason I'm gonna do that is so I can work my way up the head so all my pieces aren't laying on top of each other. Because of my cap holes, my second and third diagonals aren't perfect, right? Because I'm leaving hair out in between, I'm not using a perfect diagonal because I really want that white blonde hair to mix in, right? To give me that, that appearance of holographic. So, they're not perfect diagonals, but they're the closest that I could get using a standard cap, which has pre-marked holes, right? Melting my colors on a stringle strand is gonna allow me for an even softer transition. Also, my hot tip, I could reverse these colors, right? I could start with my red in the bottom, so my bubblegum pink, and work my way up to my indigo or my dusty purple, if that's what my client was looking for. So there are ways to tweak it if I still wanna have that perfect rainbow. All right guys, so let's get into our step-by-step. -step. So the first thing that I need to do, obviously, is pre-lighten my client, right? Can't throw a pastel shade on virgin or even colored hair, right? Because you're not gonna see it. So I'm gonna pre-lighten my client globally and evenly. I'm gonna do a platinum card. I'm gonna tone out all the warmth. My typical go-to platinum formula is gonna be a 10B SPV from ColorSync. Equal parts, for the most part, unless I need more undertone control, in which case I always up my 10B. So let's get started. Alright guys, so I just finished my platinum card and as you can see, we have a nice, even, completely level 10. So I'm going to rinse out my lightener. So now that I have this perfect pale yellow level 10, I'm going to shampoo only. And then I'm gonna go back in with my toner, which we talked about. I like to use an equal part 10B SPV. But since she lifted so light, I feel like I can probably get away with a little more SPV. So I'm gonna use a full ounce of SPV, Sheer Pastel Violet, with a half ounce of 10B, 10 volume, processor 20 minutes, and then we'll see the result when we're done. Okay, so we got her all washed out. So we did our rinse, 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 and we only shampooed out our toner, no conditioner, because we're gonna put our deposit back on top. We don't wanna close, close that cuticle. So I'm gonna use Matrix Instacare on her hair before I dry her so we can cap her. 
Um, I really like the Instacure. It's gonna even out all her porosity, so everything processes really, really evenly. And I always like to make sure that I'm combing it through. I'm also gonna dry her in her natural fall. So wherever her part is, that's how I'm gonna dry her. So that way when I cap her, I can actually cater right to specifically where she parts her hair. All right, so I got her all nice and dry to her natural fall, all nice and smooth. So I'm gonna take my cap and tie it. I'm placing it on where I did my sectioning for her part. And I'm going to pull her hair through the pre-marked holes, and I'm going to start first with my first diagonal, go to my second and my third, so I'm working my way up off the head. As I pull each section out, I'm also going to comb it because I want to make sure that I don't have any looped hair, so when I go back into color, I don't have any weird spots on our scalp. Mm Okay, so as you can see, I pulled really even sections, so every pole that I pulled hair through is relatively the same density all the way around her head. So now I'm going to start coloring. I'm going to start on my first diagonal, which is my black line, with my dusty purple. So I'm going to get my colors mixed up and we're going to get the color blue. Alright guys, so as you can see, I'm going to start with my black circles, which is going to be my dusty purple, which don't be scared, it comes out green, okay? And I'm just going to paint all of my black circles to start with, all the way around the head. You'll also notice that I'm using really tiny paint brushes for this whole technique. Because these strands are so small, I need to make sure that I'm catering to her actual hair rather than trying to put a big giant color brush up in here. All right, so now I've done my first row of indigo or my dusty purple. So now I'm gonna go back in and do my green circles, which as we can see are gonna be a melt of sweet mint, dusty blue, and our lavender macaroon.
All right, guys, so as you can see, she's all done. So now I'm going to let her process at least 30 minutes with the direct dye, just because obviously we're only staining the cuticle and the shades are so light, we really want them to take, so longer if possible. Okay, so we processed her full time and now we're going to rinse, and I'm going to rinse her with a cap still on with cold water, just because I don't want any of this direct dye molecule to catch in her platinum hair. So now that I've got her completely rinsed out, I'm also going to use our Keep Me Vivid Color Laminator because I want her color to last as long as possible, especially since we did um, pastels. So we're gonna let that stay on for one full minute and then I'm gonna also add in our Keep Me Vivid conditioner. Because I use the semi-permanent, we don't have to shampoo her out. So I'm gonna choose not to, to prolong her color as long as possible. Then we applied our Keep Me Vivid Color Laminer for one minute, then we put our conditioner over the top, and then we rinsed all of that out with cold water. So now we're ready to style out. So the products I'm going to use today on her hair are the Matrix Miracle Creator. So this is going to be our leave-in conditioner. The reason I'm going to use it is because it's also a heat protectant. It's going to even out her porosity since we did a full bleach on her, as well as reduce dryness in Colorado. It's always a problem. And it's gonna minimize, minimize her damage and breakage, which her hair will use a really low volume, so she doesn't really have any, but it's better to be safe than sorry. I'm also gonna use the last piece of our Keep Me Vivid line, which is our color velvetizer. It has a UV filter that's fade proof, as well as velvetizes your strands, and it also has a 450 degree heat protection. Hair like this, I want as much heat protection as possible because I'm obviously gonna dry her out and give her a heat style. Here is the finished result of kaleidoscope capping. Let's recap. First, I pre-lighten the hair to ensure an even and consistent base for direct dyes. Next, I pre-tone to remove any excess warmth and undertone that would negatively affect the fashion shades, in this case, pastels. Next, I dried the hair in natural fall to ensure correct and color placement after affixing the cap on the client's head, followed by pulling hair strands through the pre-marked holes in the highlighting cap. Make sure to pull the same density of hair through each hole to, to avoid inconsistencies. Then I applied my color, starting at the hairline and working back towards the top of the head. After processing for at least 30 minutes, I rinsed with cold water and applied color laminator and Keep Me Vivid conditioner. I finished with UV color velvetizer and Miracle Creator before blow drying and lightly ironing the hair. Thanks for watching my video and for your consideration.